you're breathing. Right now in this moment, you're taking in air. And that simple act proves something profound. You've survived everything life has thrown at you so far. Every single thing. And some of those things were absolutely brutal, weren't they? Some of those wounds go so deep you can barely stand to look at them. Those childhood memories that make your stomach clench, your throat tighten, your heart race even decades later. I know that feeling, that instinct to run, to hide, to pretend those early years never happened, to build walls so thick nothing can ever hurt you again. But tonight, we're going to do something different. Tonight, we're going to look straight into those wounds, not because we enjoy the pain, but because it's time to finally understand something crucial. You are not those wounds. You never were. Let me say that again, and I want you to really hear it. You are not what happened to you. You are what you choose to become. I see some of you shifting uncomfortably in your seats. Others are nodding, perhaps a bit too eagerly, thinking, yes, yes, I know this already. But do you, do you really? Because if you did, you wouldn't still be carrying around that heavy backpack of shame, that crushing weight of not good enough, that constant need to prove yourself to everyone around you. Some of you grew up hearing you were worthless so many times you started believing it was your name. Others learned to walk on eggshells so young your bodies forgot how to relax. Many of you became experts at reading moods before you could read books because your survival depended on it. And now, decades later, you're still reading rooms, still trying to be perfect, still running from shadows that no longer exist. You know what I'm talking about? Don't you? That voice in your head that says you don't deserve success, love, or happiness. That constant critic telling you you're going to mess everything up just like they always said you would. That exhausting need to control everything. Because once upon a time, your world was so desperately out of control. But here's what those voices never tell you. That hypervigilance that haunts you, it also made you incredibly perceptive. That overwhelming sensitivity, it's given you an extraordinary capacity for empathy. That constant preparation for the worst, it's made you one of the most resourceful people. I remember working with a man. Let's call him Michael. He came from a household where unpredictability was the only predictable thing. His father's temper was like a tornado. You never knew when it would strike but you knew the destruction would be absolute. Michael learned to become invisible. He learned to read the slightest change in voice tone, the smallest shift in body language. He became a master of anticipating needs before they were expressed. For years, he saw these traits as proof of his damage. I'm always on edge, he told me. I can never relax. I'm broken. But then something remarkable happened. Michael became one of the most successful crisis negotiators in his... Why? Because those very same skills. The hyper-awareness. The ability to read people. The capacity to stay calm in chaos. These weren't his wounds. They were his superpowers. But let me be crystal clear about some. I'm not here to tell you your trauma was a gift. I'm not here to wrap your pain in a pretty bow and call it a blessing. What happened to you was wrong. It was unfair. It should never happen, period. What I am saying is that you are not defined by what was done to you. You are defined by what you do with it. Think about that for a moment. Really let it sink in. Your trauma is not your identity. It's something that happened to you, not something you are. Just like a car accident isn't who you are. Just like a broken bone isn't who you are. Your childhood trauma is an event, not your essence. Some of you are sitting there thinking, you don't understand. My situation was different. My pain was worse. And you're right, I don't know your specific story, but I know this, I, pain is not a competition. Trauma is not a medal you wear to prove your worth. It's not a membership card to some exclusive club of suffering. The truth is, trauma doesn't make you special. Your response to it does. Your resilience does. Your courage to sit here tonight, willing to face these demons, that's what makes you remarkable. The fact that you're still here, still breathing, still trying to grow. That's what makes you extraordinary. I've seen people use their childhood trauma as a shield, a sword, and a prison cell. They wear it like armor, brandishing their pain as proof they can never be hurt again. But here's the devastating truth. When you wear armor all the time, you don't just keep pain out. You keep love out too. You don't just protect yourself from hurt. You protect yourself from joy. 
from connection, from the very experiences that make life worth living. Look at your hands for a moment. Really look at them. These hands have carried so much pain, haven't they? They've wiped away so many tears, formed so many fists, perhaps even struck out in anger or fear. But these same hands have also created beautiful things. They've held others in comfort. They've written stories, built things, caressed loved ones, planted gardens, made music. These hands tell the truth about who you are, not just vessels of past pain, but instruments of future creation. They remind us that we are not static beings frozen in time at our worst moments. We are constantly evolving, constantly creating. But I hear some of you thinking, I've tried to change. I've tried to, to move past it. Nothing works. And I understand that frustration. When you've spent years, decades even, viewing yourself through the lens of trauma, the idea of seeing yourself differently feels impossible. It's like trying to convince a fish that water isn't all there is. They have it every day. Every single person in this room is proof of that. The mere fact that you exist is a statistical impossibility, yet here you are. The odds that you would survive everything you've been through were astronomical, yet here you are. You're already a walking, breathing impossible thing. So perhaps it's time to consider that healing is possible too. Not the kind of healing that erases the past. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the kind of healing that allows you to carry your history without being crushed by it. The kind of healing that transforms your wounds into wisdom. Let me tell you something that might shock you. I, your trauma has been lying to you. It's been telling you stories about who you are, what you're worth, what you're capable of. And you've been believing these stories because they came wrapped in the authority of your earliest experiences. Think about it. And, and when someone tells a three-year-old they're stupid, worthless, or unlovable, that child doesn't have the cognitive ability to say, well, that's just your opinion and you're clearly dealing with your own issues. No, that child absorbs that message like gospel truth. And unless something interrupts that pattern, that three-year-old grows into an adult who's still living by that gospel. I once worked with a brilliant executive, a man who'd built a million dollar company from scratch. Yet every time he achieved something remarkable, he'd sabotage it. Well, because somewhere deep in his psyche, a five-year-old boy was still hearing his father's voice. Who do you think you are? You think you're special. You'll never amount to anything. That man had let his father's voice become his identity. But here's the revolution. That voice was never his truth. It was just a story he'd been told so many times he forgot it wasn't his own. Your trauma speaks in absolutes. It deals in always and never. You'll never be good enough. You'll always be alone. Nobody can be trusted. Everything falls apart in the end. But life doesn't operate in absolutes. Life operates in possibilities. Right now, in this moment, I want you to recognize something powerful. Every single thought you have about yourself was learned. Every single one. Even the ones that feel so fundamental to who you are that challenging them feels like challenging gravity. They were all learned. And anything that can be learned can be unlearned. This isn't about positive thinking. This isn't about slapping a happy face sticker over your pain. This is about revolution. This is about radical truth telling. This is about looking at every always and never. Your trauma taught you and asking, is this really true? Or is this just what I learned to believe when I was too young to know better? This work isn't easy. It's not comfortable. Growth never is. You're essentially rewiring neural pathways that have been reinforced for decades. You're challenging beliefs that have become as automatic as breathing. Of course, it's going to feel impossible at first. Remember this? The same brain that learned to survive trauma, that created complex coping mechanisms, that managed to keep you alive through impossible circumstances. That same brain has the capacity to learn new patterns, to create new pathways, to imagine and embody new possibilities. Your brain is not your enemy here. It's been your most faithful protector. Those anxiety responses, those trust issues, those walls you built, they all served a purpose once. They kept you safe when you needed protection. But just like you wouldn't wear a winter coat in summer, you don't need to wear those protective behaviors when they no longer serve you. What if everything you think is wrong with you is actually evidence of your strength? What if your trust issues are proof of your wisdom because you learned early that not everyone deserves trust? What if your anxiety is actually your intelligence because you learn to be prepared for anything? 
What if your sensitivity isn't weakness, but rather an extraordinary capacity for awareness? Now, I'm not suggesting you should stay anxious or untrusting. I'm suggesting that before you can transform these traits, you need to honor them. They were your survival strategies. They kept you alive. Thank them for their service. And then give yourself permission to learn new ways of being. Here's the truth that your trauma doesn't want you to know. You are not your past. You are not your pain. You are not your parents' mistakes. You are not what happened to you. You are what you choose to become in this moment. And the next moment, every time you choose compassion over criticism, you're choosing to become someone new. Every time you choose to trust despite your fear, you're choosing to become someone new. Every time you choose to stay present instead of dissociating, you're choosing to become someone new. Your trauma wants you to believe that you're permanently damaged goods. It wants you to believe that you're unfixable, unlovable, unredeemable. But look around this room. Look at the person next to you. Every single person here has a story. Every single person here has wounds. And every single person here is proof that wounds can heal, that stories can, can change, that new chapters can be written. I worked with a woman once who'd spent 40 years believing she was fundamentally broken. Her childhood had been a master class in neglect and emotional abuse. She lived her entire adult life trying to prove she had a right to exist. She overachieved, overgave, overfunctioned, anything to justify taking up space in the world. One day, during a particularly intense session, she had a breakthrough that changed everything. She realized that she'd been living her entire life as if she needed to earn the right to be human, as if she needed to perform enough good deeds to compensate for the crime of being born, as if her existence itself needed justification. That realization broke something open in her. For the first time, she could see how her entire identity had been built around compensating for wounds she never deserved. She could see how every achievement, every relationship, every decision had been influenced by this core belief that she was somehow fundamentally flawed. And in that moment of seeing, something shifted. She began to understand that she didn't need to earn her right to exist. She didn't need to compensate for being born. She didn't need to prove her worth to anyone because worth isn't something you earn. It's something you're born with. This is the truth your trauma doesn't want you to know. You were born worthy. You were born complete. You were born deserving of love, respect, and dignity. Nothing that happened to you, nothing changed that fundamental truth. You know what's fascinating about trauma? It creates illusions. It's like a master magician making you believe things that aren't real. It makes you believe that hypervigilance is safety, that perfectionism is protection, that keeping everyone at arm's length means you'll never get hurt again. But these are just illusions, smoke and mirrors, and the biggest illusion of all, that you are your trauma. Let me tell you something that might shake you to your core. Everything you think makes you broken might actually be what makes you extraordinary. That sensitivity you hate, it's also what allows you to understand others deeply. That overthinking you curse, it's also what makes you incredibly perceptive. That fear of abandonment. It's also what makes you loyal beyond measure. The problem isn't these traits. The problem is that trauma convinced you they're weaknesses instead of potential strengths. I remember working with a man who'd grown up with an alcoholic mother. By age seven, he could read her moods from the way she turned her key in the lock. By age 10, he could predict a violent outburst from the slightest change in her breathing pattern. He grew up believing this hypervigilance was his curse, his damage, his proof that he was irreparably broken but here's what he couldn't see. This same hypervigilance made him an exceptional emergency room doctor. His ability to notice subtle changes to anticipate problems before they became crises, to remain calm in chaos, these ones, they were his gifts, forged in fire. Your trauma wants you to believe that you're damaged beyond repair, that you're too sensitive, too broken, too much or not enough. But what if, and I want you to really consider this, what if your trauma is lying to you? What if every time you think I'm too sensitive, the truth is you're incredibly perceptive? What if every time you think I'm too anxious, the truth is you're highly attuned? What if every time you think I'm broken, the truth is you're incredibly resilient? Because here's what your trauma doesn't want you to know. Resilience isn't about being unbreakable. 
It's about being broken and putting yourself back together again and again and again, each time learning something new about your own strength. Think about that for a moment. Every time life knocked you down, you got back up. Every time your heart was broken, it kept beating. Every time you thought you couldn't go on, you did. That's not damage. That's not weakness. That's raw, undiluted strength. But some of you are sitting there thinking, you don't understand, I'm still struggling. I still have panic attacks. I still can't trust. I still feel broken. And you know what? That's okay. Having wounds doesn't make you weak. Having scars doesn't make you broken. It makes you human. The goal isn't to erase your past or pretend it never happened. The goal is to stop letting it control your future, to stop letting it define who you are and what you're capable of becoming. I worked with a woman who'd spent her entire life trying to be perfect, perfect grades, perfect job, perfect house, perfect family. Why? Because as a child, she learned that maybe if she was perfect enough, her father would stop drinking. Maybe if she was perfect enough, her mother would stop crying. Maybe if she was perfect enough, someone would finally love her the way she deserved to be loved. It took her years to realize that perfection was just another form of self-punishment, that she was still trying to earn love that should have been freely given, that she was still trying to prove her worth to people who had never questioned their own. Here's what she learned, and what I want you to learn. You don't have to earn love. You don't have to prove your worth. You don't have to be perfect to deserve respect, kindness, or dignity. Your trauma wants you to believe that you're defined by what happened to you, that you're nothing more than the sum of your wounds. But that's like saying a, a book is nothing more than its first chapter. You are a story still being written. You are a possibility still unfolding. Think about a garden for a moment. When a garden has been neglected, when the soil has been poisoned, when nothing good has been planted there, does that mean it's forever ruined? No. It means it needs attention. It needs care. It needs someone to believe in its potential enough to start clearing away the weeds, enriching the soil, planting new seeds. Your mind is that garden. Your trauma may have poisoned the soil, planted weeds of self-doubt and fear, but you are the gardener now. You get to decide what grows there. You get to Decide what thoughts you nurture and what beliefs you weed out. This isn't about denying your past. It's about claiming your future. It's about recognizing that while you can't change what happened to you, you have absolute power over what happens next. Some of you might be thinking, but I've tried to change. I've tried therapy. I've tried self-help books. I've tried everything. And maybe you have. What I want you to consider, what if trying to change isn't about forcing yourself to be different, but about allowing yourself to be who you truly are beneath the trauma. Because here's the trupa. Your trauma taught you to be someone you're not. It taught you to be small when you were meant to be magnificent. It taught you to be quiet when you were meant to roar. It taught you to be invisible when you were meant to shine. Your trauma has been running a dictatorship in your mind for far too long. It's been making all the rules, setting all the boundaries, deciding what's possible and what isn't. But here's the revolution. You can stage a cop. You can overthrow that dictator. You can reclaim your mind as your own territory. You know what makes drama so insidious? It doesn't just change what you think. It changes how you think. It rewires your brain to expect the worst, to look for danger, to find evidence that confirms your unworthiness. It's like wearing dark glasses and forgetting they're there. Wondering why everything looks so dim. I worked with a man who was convinced he was toxic to everyone around him. Why? Because his mother told him repeatedly throughout his childhood that he was the reason for her unhappiness. He grew up believing he was poison. He'd sabotage relationships before they could get close. He'd quit jobs before his toxicity could ruin things. He lived his entire life trying to protect others from himself but here's what blew his mind. His very concern about being toxic was proof that he wasn't. Toxic people don't worry about hurting others. They don't try to protect people from themselves. His deep care for others wasn't evidence of his damage. It was evidence of his humanity surviving despite the damage. Some of you are nodding right now because you know exactly what I'm talking about. You've been carrying 
labels that were slapped on you by people who couldn't handle their own pain. Too sensitive, too needy, too much, not enough. You've been living your life trying to prove these labels wrong, or worse, trying to make yourself fit them because you thought they were true. Those labels were never about you. They were about the limitations of the people who gave them to you. They were about their fear, their inadequacy, their inability to handle the magnificent complexity of who you really are. Your trauma wants you to believe that you're small, that you're weak, that you're irreparably damaged. But look at the evidence. You survived, not just survived. You're here seeking growth, fighting for understanding, refusing to let your past have the last word. That's not weakness. That's warrior spirit. The very fact that you can feel deeply, that you can hurt deeply, that you can fear deeply, it's all evidence of your capacity to love deeply, to hope deeply, to live deeply. Your sensitivity is in your curse. It's your superpower. But some of you are thinking, I don't want this superpower. I don't want to feel everything so intensely. I just want to be normal. Let me ask you something. What is normal? Is it normal to be unmoved by injustice? Is it normal to be untouched by beauty? Is it normal to be unchanged by love? Or is that just uh, numb? Your trauma taught you that feeling deeply is dangerous, that needing others is weak, that standing out is asking for trouble. But those weren't lessons. They were lies. They were survival strategies that have outlived their usefulness. Think about it like this. If you were in a war zone, you'd develop certain habits. You'd walk quietly. You'd stay alert. You'd trust no one. Those behaviors would keep you alive. But if you kept those behaviors when you were no longer in danger, if you still walked quietly in your own home, still stayed alert at parties, still trusted no one in peacetime, those survival strategies would become prison walls. That's what trauma does. It keeps you living in a war zone long after the war is over. It keeps you fighting battles that ended years ago. It keeps you defending yourself against enemies that no longer exist. But here's the revolution. You can lay down those weapons now. You can step out of that war zone. You can come home to yourself. I know some of you are resisting this idea. You're thinking, but if I let my guard down, if I stop being hypervigilant, if I trust people, I'll get hurt again. And you might be right. You might get hurt. But here's what your trauma never taught you. You can survive being hurt. You've already proven that. What you can't survive is never truly living because that's what trauma steals from you, not just your past but your present, your ability to be here now fully alive, fully engaged, fully yourself. It keeps you stuck in survival mode when you were meant to thrive. You know, you know what's fascinating? Research shows that trauma can be passed down through generations, not just through behavior, not just through parenting styles, but through actual genetic changes. Think about that. Your ancestors' pain literally lives in your DNA. If trauma can be inherited, so can healing. Every time you choose to face your pain instead of passing it on, every time you choose to break a toxic pattern, every time you choose to love despite your fear, you're not just healing yourself. You're healing your lineage. You're changing the story for generations to come. Some of you might be thinking, it's too late for me. I've already passed my trauma on to my children. Listen to me carefully. It's never too late to heal, never. Your healing at any age, at any stage, it ripples out and touches everyone around you. Your children don't need you to be perfect. They need you to be real. They need to see you fighting for your healing, choosing growth over comfort, choosing truth over denial. Because here's what your trauma doesn't want you to know. You know. Healing is contagious. Hope is contagious. Love is contagious. Your courage to face your pain, to challenge your beliefs, to choose a different way. It gives others permission to do the same. We're coming to the most crucial part now the part where truth meets action, the part where insight becomes transformation. Because understanding your trauma isn't enough, recognizing its lies isn't enough, you have to decide right here, right now, who you're gonna be despite it. This isn't about forgiveness. This isn't about finding the silver lining. This isn't about spiritual bypassing or toxic positivity. This is about power, raw, unapologetic, life-changing power, the power to say. This happened to me, but it will not define me. This wounded me, but it will not stop me. This changed me, but it will not limit me. I've worked with thousands of people. And you know what I've noticed? 
the ones who heal aren't necessarily the ones who had the best therapist or the most resources or the strongest support systems. The ones who heal are the ones who decide to heal. The ones who get fed up with letting their past pilot their present. The ones who get angry enough at their traumas, dictatorship to stage an uprising. Some of you are sitting there thinking, but I don't know how to heal. I don't know where to start. Start here, start now. Start by questioning every always and never in your mind. Start by challenging every I can't and I'm not worthy. Start by recognizing that the voice of your trauma is not the voice of your truth. Your trauma speaks in absolutes. But life exists in possibilities. Your trauma says you'll never recover, but you're already recovering. Your trauma says you'll always be broken, but you're already healing. Your trauma says you can't change, but you're changing right now in this very moment just by being here, just by being willing to face this truth. I want you to do something right now. I want you to put your hand on your heart. Feel it beating. That heartbeat is proof of your resilience. Every beat is a rebellion against everything that tried to break you. Every beat is a declaress. I'm still here, I'm still fighting, I'm still becoming. Now I want you to make a promise to that beating heart. Promise that you'll stop apologizing for surviving. Promise that you'll stop shrinking to make others comfortable. Promise that you'll stop letting your past dictate your future. Because here's what your trauma really doesn't want you to know. You don't need to wait for permission to heal. You don't need to wait until you feel ready. You don't need to wait until you've figured everything out. You just need to start. Start by telling yourself a new story. Not the story of what happened to you, but the story of what you did next. The story of how you rose the story of how you reclaimed your power, the story of how you transformed your wounds into wisdom. I worked with a woman who'd spent decades believing she was unlovable because that's what her childhood taught her. She built walls so high nobody could reach her. She pushed away anyone who tried to get, she thought she was protecting herself, but she was really just reinforcing her trauma's lie. One day she made a decision. She decided her trauma had stolen enough of her life. She decided she was done letting fear make her decisions. She decided to tear down those walls brick by brick, even though it terrified her. Even though she had no guarantee, she wouldn't get hurt again. And yes, she did get hurt sometimes. But here's what she discovered. She could handle it. She could survive it. She could learn from it. Each time she got back up, she got stronger. Each time she tried again, she got braver. Each time she chose love over fear, she got freer. That's what I want for every single one of you. Not a life without pain, that's not possible or even desirable. But a life where pain doesn't get to vote on your worth. A life where trauma doesn't get to veto your joy. And a life where your past informs you but doesn't define you. Because you are not what happened to you. You are what you choose to become. And that choice is available to you in every moment starting right now. Your trauma wants you to believe that healing is impossible. That change is impossible. That joy is impossible. But look around this room. Look at how many impossible things are already true. Look at how many battles you've already won. Look at how many times you've already risen. You are not your trauma. You are not your past. You are not what happened to you. You are what you choose to become. And that choice begins now. Right now, in this stand up. Yes, right now, stand up. Feel the strength in your legs that have carried you through every dark day. Feel the power in your spine that has helped you stand tall despite everything that tried to break you. Feel the courage in your heart that has kept beating despite every reason to give up. This is your moment of revolution. This is your declaration of independence from every limiting belief your trauma installed. This is your line in the sand saying, no more. My past ends here. My new story begins now. Remember this moment? Remember this truth? Remember this truth? You are not your trauma. You never were. You are the courage it took to survive it. You are the strength it took to face it. You are the wisdom it took to learn from it. And most importantly, you are the love it could never kill, the hope it could never crush, and the spirit it could never break. Now go, go and live like someone who knows their worth isn't determined by their wounds. Go and love like someone who knows they deserve to be loved. Go and dream like someone who knows their past doesn't define their future. Because that's who you are. That's who you've always been. And that's who you're becoming right here, right now, in this moment of choice. The choice is yours. The time is now. 
The power is within you. Use it. Your new story begins today.